Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to talk about congruent triangles. What does that mean, congruent triangles? Well, the definition is as follows. Two triangles are congruent when the following conditions are true, that the six parts of one triangle are congruent to the six corresponding parts of the other triangle. So what are the six parts of a triangle? Well, the six parts of a triangle are the three sides and the three angles. That makes up the six parts of a triangle. So here are two triangles and they all have six parts. There's three sides and three angles, three sides and three angles. So what are the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles? Well, notice we have the longest of the three sides right here. It has three th thick marks. Here are the longest sides with the three thick marks. This is an indication that these two sides are congruent, which means they are the same length. Same with this side right here and this side right here. They are what we call the corresponding sides. They each have two thick marks indicating they both are the same length. And here's the third side, the short side is this triangle, and the short side of this triangle, again with the one thick mark indicating that they're both the same length, which would, which would mean that the three sides and the three corresponding sides all have the same length, therefore they are congruent. In the same way, the, the small angle right here and the small angle right there, the acute angles right here, they're the they're congruent to one another, indicating with the one thick mark right, right there. So it would indicate that this is congruent to this angle. Those are corresponding angles. This angle and this angle, those are equal or therefore congruent and they're corresponding angles. And those two angles are equal or congruent and they're corresponding angles. So you can see that the six parts of this triangle are congruent to the six parts of this triangle and therefore they are congruent triangles. So, in order to prove that one triangle is congruent to another triangle, does that mean we have to show that all six parts are equal? And the answer is no. It is sufficient to show that three of the six parts are equal or congruent. And so we have a mnemonic, so to speak, or not a mnemonic per se, but an acronym for each of the four cases that we could have that prove that two triangles are equal or congruent to one another. The first one is SSS standing for the three sides. If the three sides of one triangle are con congruent, to the three sides or the corresponding three sides of the other triangle, then they must be equal or congruent. So it's sufficient to show that all three sides are equal. It's also sufficient to show that two sides and the included angle, the angle between the two sides, if the two sides and the angle between the, between the two sides of one triangle are equal to the two sides and the angle between the two sides are included within the two sides are equal, then the two triangles are congruent as well. It's also sufficient to show that two angles and the included side are equal to one another. So for example, if this angle and this angle and the side in between is equal to this side, uh, to, let's see here, this angle and this angle. So if these two angles and the included side and these two angles and the included side are equal to each other, then the two triangles must be congruent. And finally, if two angles and a non-included side are equal in one, from one triangle to the other, then they are congruent as well. So for example, if I take any two angles, these two angles, and one side, maybe this side and this side, if those two angles and this side are equal to each other, congruent to each other, then the two triangles are congruent. So that's why it's sufficient to show that any three parts, be it three sides, two sides and an angle, two angles and a side, if they're equal to one another, then the two triangles are congruent. One case that is not the case, if the three angles of one triangle are congruent to the three angles of the other triangle, that does not guarantee, and very likely not, that the two triangles are congruent because you can have one very tiny triangle, one very big triangle, the angles being the same, but def definitely the triangles are not congruent. What about the case when the triangles are right triangles? They each have a 90 degree angle. That already means if two triangles have a 90 degree angle, they at least have already have one angle in common. Then the only additional conditions required is that, and of course with a right triangle, the two sides here are called legs and the long side across from the 90 degree angle is called the hypotenuse. And so we have L for the legs and H for the hypotenuse. So the condition is, if two right triangles are equal to each other or congruent, it is sufficient to show that the two legs are equal or the two legs are congruent, that the hypotenuse and one of the legs is congruent, that the hypotenuse and one of the other angles besides the 90 degree angle is congruent, or that we show that one of the legs and one of the angles is congruent to the other triangle, and then we know that the two triangles are congruent if we're dealing with right triangles. So it's easy to remember side, 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 
side angle side angle side angle or angle angle side for a non right triangle and for right triangles it's the two legs the hypotenuse in a leg, the hypotenuse in an angle, or one of the legs, or one of the angles being congruent, and then you can show that both triangles are congruent. And that's how we know triangles are congruent in geometry. And of course, later on we'll show you how to prove that, but for now it's sufficient to know that these are the rules under which we know any two triangles are congruent under those conditions. That's how it's done in geometry.